beginning, though, you know, to, that you have the full spectrum, you know, that right. you can really put him down and open the throat latch. Yeah. And then he can come up and open the throat right. latch. Not, like, stuck in a little place in between. Right. And I think I tend, especially going left, because it's been hard to get any sort of bend or flexion mm -hmm. for me, that I am over flexing him now. Because I keep hearing you say straighten him. Well, that would be because I've taught him that. <laughs> well, no, I mean, it's, 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 it's normal to feel like, okay, he feels heavy on my left rein, so I'm going to pull on the left rein more. Yeah. Because that's what you feel that you have, you know, we don't often think of the, of the empty or the negative because it's, you don't feel it, it's not there. Right. So you focus on what you do feel, which is the left rein, and you have a lot of that in your hand. But the re and then he goes around always a little bit looking to the left because there's no right pressure to counteract it. Yeah. So I think bending him is going to become way easier once you establish your right rein, that outside rein going left. That's probably why it's just challenging going left. Yeah. Because you lose your outer rein, and sometimes you have to really just take it and straighten him and force yourself to give your left hand forward and say, you're not going to lean on this. So walk across the diagonal and then at F, pick him up in the walk. So feel that you have access to both sides of his mouth. Good. And even now you're already thinking, I'm not going to grab onto the left rein. Here's my right rein, buddy. Here's my right rein. Good. Yeah, of course when he's distracted, then he touches the left rein. Good. Yeah, so that both reins feel the same, that there's just really no difference between your right and your left rein. And that you don't make accommodations for him knowing, oh, he's just always stiff on this side, so I'm just going to let him be heavier. Both hands up. Rotate your forearm out. So turn both thumbs out. Yeah, so you're, bring your pinkies closer together. Good. I'm trying to get you to rule out with your forearms, which creates a better hinge this way. Because if you're like this, yeah. and I'm telling you, like, raise your hands from your elbows, you're like, I can't. So rotating even more. Overdo it. Yeah. Like, could you touch your elbows together in front of your ribcage? Yeah. Like that. Good. Now raise both hands two inches. Yeah. Relax the front forearm. Yeah. So I don't want to see all your tendons bulging in your forearm. Yeah. Good. So everyone says like, I'm just not strong enough to ride. It's well, it does take some strength, but basically being too strong is a bad thing too, because if you're trying to muscle it or hold things together with your strength, then you don't get that self carriage. So really you shouldn't have any muscle tension right now. Just raise both hands even higher. Yeah, and you can do that. So Eric, if you're feeling, Tarek, Eric, I'm sorry, you probably do that a lot. Um, that you're not getting him that feeling where his chest is up and the pole's the highest point. Probably because, like, you're trying to lift your hands up, but, but your forearms and your elbows aren't in the alignment that you can do that. Yeah. So then you over-rotate like that, and then relax your forearm in that position. Good job! Okay, and then um, let's canter at A. So wake this walk up a little bit. Hands higher. Carry them up there. Higher. Higher. Yeah, let them know what's happening. Nice job. Good. Now rock them back. No, he's not. You know, truly, like, you you have to think you're riding an FEI horse because that's the goal. Yeah. You know, third level is not the goal. <laughs> Will you get derby ready? Yeah. Hands higher. Rock him back. Good. Yeah, nice, good. Inside leg, outside leg. Just quicken those hind legs, and at the same time, you keep rebalancing up. Good, tickle them more, good. Yep, good. Not so much up and in front with your hands, because right now you don't have enough engine to sustain it. So do a 10 meter circle, and just tickle them up on the croup with the whip. And then you're ready to guide it and adjust it in front circle. Yes, you, when you lose the rhythm, 
the connection goes away. Circle. Now turn him around from your outer ring. Close your outside fingers. Good. Look right between his ears. Look right between his ears. Relax your right thigh. Good. Turn your head. Look at his outside ring. Look down at your outside ring. Turn your whole head to the left. There you go. Now raise your left hand. Now give. Good. Now activate the hind leg. That's no problem. Just walk. Ooh, that was nice. Nice. Up and in front. Make sure that you find your release in that half halt. Half halt. So eat. Keep recycling the energy. You have to create it, guide it, and give it. Good, inside leg, outside leg, constantly. Because if you leave him alone, his hind legs get slow and like molasses. Inside leg, outside leg. And then guide it up and in front of you, 10 meter circle. Inside leg, outside leg. Yeah, so you're waiting too long to reactivate. Circle, 10 meters, circle. Outside leg, outside rein. Yeah, keep, so use your outer rein to, with the turning. Yeah, so that's at like a 15 meter circle. Look over your left shoulder again. Circle with the whip, do a 10 meter circle. Then make it happen. You're letting him just decide that's how it's gonna be. No, it's gonna be a 10 meter circle. Look over your outside shoulder. Circle again. Look over your outside shoulder. You're not, you know where you're going. It's the same rectangle. Now carry your right thumb up and turn. Yeah. Good, inside leg, outside leg. Good, so you're not giving like heavy, strong squeezes with your leg, you're doing like touch, touch. Quick, quick, 10 meter circle. Turn him with your outer rein. Good, look over your outside shoulder. There you go, you feel that left rein. And a walk transition, good. Cir stay on a circle. And a walk transition. Oh, I couldn't hear you. That's okay, sit, walk, walk. Yeah, so you're not gonna get the changes unless that half halt comes through quicker. Stay on a 10 meter circle and canter again. Yeah, so turn your upper body more to the inside. Pull your inside shoulder back. Push your outside shoulder forward, that's it. So you turn his shoulders by turning your shoulders. Inside leg, good, and turn. Inside leg, flexion right. Good, what are you looking at? No, you're not. <laughs> Hands up, inside hand or up and around. Turn, circle. We're just gonna go in and out of some walk canter transitions. Good, now a walk. Now, two, three, four. Straighten them with the outer rein a little bit. Good, circle. Relax the forearms. Look down the outer rein. Activate. Yeah, so before you do your walk transition, Quick in the hind leg. Stay on a circle. Turn your upper body around, right shoulder back, hands higher. Good, what are you looking at? The dirt in the middle of the arena? You must be a jumper, trained as a jumper. Every rider I teach who's been a jumper or an eventer looks some at some arbitrary thing like in the middle of the arena on the ground. Look at him and walk. Right rein, left rein, sorry, left rein. Good, good, keep looking down. Know what's happening underneath you. If you're looking over your shoulder down at the dirt in front of you, you may miss his shoulder falling out. Like right now, his shoulder's falling out. And canter. Look down the outside shoulder, inside leg. Yeah, you're not gonna, so you put your outer leg back, but it's gotta be the impulse from the inner leg to canter. Circle both hands to the inside. Good, inside hand to the inside. Look down the outer rein. Activate. Inside leg and a walk transition. Ah. Hands up, turn your upper body around the circle. Bring your right shoulder back. Right hand wide, inside leg. Hands up and a walk transition. Up, up, turn, keep on your circle. Open your inner hand around the circle. Right shoulder back, right shoulder back and walk. Left rein. Good, then your outer leg has to be there to guard that haunch so he doesn't throw it out. Because you want him to stay balanced and equal on both hind legs and not swing his butt out. Now do a walk or a cancer transition from your inner leg. Inside leg, now, now, good. Both hands to the inside, right shoulder back. Good, what are you looking at? 
Look down at him. Turn your head to the left because you're twerking your head to the wrong direction with whatever you're looking at. And a walk transition. Good. Good. Give him a long rein and pet him. Good job. So those walk canter walk transitions are the timing for the flying change. Yeah. And if he's running through or he's not listening to the cue to canter, you're not going to get the cue to tell him change. And if he's running through the half halt, when you say change, he's just going to launch in the air and you get this big ex overly explosive change because he's running through the half halt. So that all exists in those walk canter walk transitions. But the whole right side of your body when you go, because basically your body, you're looking right, your body is positioned left when you're trying to go to the this way. So you're kind of like, and then your right hand is trying to come and is trying to turn, but your body's still saying go left. So when you go to the right, you have to think about in, from your torso, twisting more to the inside, bringing your, like that, and then turn your head to the left. Good. So that everything is a little more open open here. And because he will mimic your body language. Yeah. So if you ride around like this and here and look in here, then he's going to mimic that with his body. If you're open here and up and all everything is movable, nothing's like locked and rigid, yeah. then he's more likely to be up. And then you can Boy. just turn, you know, if you want to do a shoulder in, you just your shoulders in you know or if you want to do um like you just circle like your upper body can indicate that so you don't have to like really pull or do anything with the rain because he becomes more on your feet i feel like he is really good i mean like when super. i ride him he's super yeah no it looks really and i just i think that would um just a few tweaks in position will just make him softer yeah yeah. And that's really the thing, the only that softness and the giving, because mm -hmm. you can always access more power. Right. That's a nice one. Um, there we go. And then creating and activating more that doesn't result in a heavier or pulling or mm -hmm. falling down contest. Mm -hmm. Do you have any thoughts or comments, questions? No, it's all good. Good. I think that, you know, the more you can become you know, really independent with your body parts, you know, that's, that's the difference between like a first and second level rider and then a rider, you know, who's aiming to be an FEI rider. Yeah. That, that you have all of the things in alignment working for you that there and you can just, then you can bring out that in the horse. So I think it stems, there's like this, there's right hip tightness, like up in your femur on the right. So doing like yeah, I try to do like open uh huh like open my hip a lot. Yeah, and I think also think about opening, but also rotating. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you're rotated, so if you're like this, and I say, because this, you know, you're not jumping, you don't have a jumper saddle, and so you want your yeah. The big Hard. difference on the look of how your leg looks and how everything's proportion so that comes you have to rotate up at the hip yeah. inward and then you then you can point your toe in without feeling like you're jamming your ankle around so if you ride if you watch you know the top riders who have your body proportions like Edward Gall and um, like Patrick Kittle and yeah. there's you know watch you know see their alignment they're not I mean, sometimes because their legs are so long, it looks like their toes are kind of pointing out. But, you know, they're, for the most part, pretty aligned with the toe slightly forward, you know, pointing. So that when you look at you coming straight on, you don't just see these two big, like, ears, like, yeah. on the side. <laughs> but it makes a difference on the whole, like, all the way up in the pelvis. And if you're a little more open and rotated inward with your thighs, you're gonna be less, there's gonna be less pressure and tension from your thighs. Cause you can generate, I mean, a lot of like strength, you know, I'm sh underneath you, like with your thighs. I'm sure they're very strong, which is helpful sometimes, but you also wanna be able to open and relax it. Like you said, like opening your hip, but then that inward 
rotation allows your lower leg to be in alignment. So what else do you want to do? Anything? I mean, we could do those walk canter transitions the other direction. Yeah, for sure. Because I think those trans walk canter transitions are like a go-to. You know, I would do school that. Okay. At, and he has you know, been. Yeah. But not just that you really demand that activity and that you, you know, he's crisp in the transitions and you're really honest with yourself if he reacts off your leg well enough or if he's listening to the half halt well enough. Because yeah. you can, yes, you can go through a series and do like 10 transitions, but if every transition he's just a little bit behind you, you know, those transitions aren't that helpful. You're not improving the self carriage. Right. Think about your right rein now. Because when you picked up the reins, he starts twisting his head to the left. We want straight aligned, hands higher and higher, and do a halt transition. Think about the hind legs halting under your butt. I don't think he can hear you. I should give him a hand up here. Yes, I should have given him. Yeah, and do a halt at C. Yeah, bring your right elbow close to your body. And halt, hind leg, good, nice. No. Good, and then he can halt, and then his chest came up and walk on. He looks so good there, Tarek. Both hands up. There's the war horse. <laughs> and which way were we cantering before? We were cantering right, okay. So let's start, we'll do a 10 meter circle right here at E. Think about your right leg. There, and let it just drape down and then point your toe inward. Because that's the difference between like, oh, that, like, wow, look at that FEI horse. Right. You know, the rider obviously dictates a lot of that. Rotate your right thigh and point your right toe forward. Use the flat part of your calf more instead of twisting your foot around and trying to use your ankle. Now turn your upper body to the inside. Relax your left forearm. So you're, tip, you're dumping the water out of the bowl there. Get your right or your left thumb on top. Bend your elbow, that's it. And then you open the door with the left rein. Circle, good, fix your right foot. Now let's wake up this walk a little bit because this is not good. Yeah, I would just, you know, you don't need the, the whip. It's just more of a presence on him. Like use your legs from a neutral leg that you just like a little bump from your leg without changing your leg position. And then let's canter when you're ready. Make sure you have an outer rein. Good. Keep your upper body turned around the circle. Left thumb on top. Good, what are you looking at? Look at his outside shoulder. Turn, there you go, turn your, so that your chin lines up with your chest. Good, now look a little left so that you don't get stuck and rigid in one position with your chin. I need to activate, right toe forward, use the flat part of your calf, circle again, left hand to the inside, bring your left shoulder back, good, and then chin right in the middle of your chest, nice, outside shoulder, good, 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 relax your, so your right thigh and leg is like a vice grip, holding on to him, tick him with your outside leg and then relax it, now you need your right rein again because he's getting heavy on the left, and he's twisting, good, straighten the neck, make it happen walk turn around the circle good right between his ears now inside good turn keep the turn you're moving the right shoulder and the right rein and canter again from your inner leg inside leg good straighten the neck hands higher and turn pull your left shoulder back inside shoulder back good outside rein get the shoulder and walk outside rein outside leg Good, and keep on the turn, good. That was nice. Outside leg, carry your hands up, and then your canter. Inside leg, outside leg, carry your left thumb. Good, and turn. Yeah, so do you feel in the moment of the transition, his shoulders dart to the right. Straighten the neck with the right rein. Control the shoulder better. Give on the left. Good, and widen your inner rein. Inside leg, outside leg, activate more canter. Flex left. Outside rein, yep, you lost the shoulder again. Good, good, and a walk transition. Left thumb up, 
good. And then one more canter. Make sure you have an outer rein. Yeah, outside rein, then soften and give on the left rein. Good, now go up the center line. And, whoopsie. Now straight on the center line. Left thumb on top. And a walk transition. Sit. Good, track right. Center right. Yeah, sorry. Good, straight ahead. Good. So that the canter, you know, feels kind of like a little creepy crawly. Little tick with the inside leg, outside leg, and then half halt and give. Center line, select, hands higher. Don't be so pretty. Hands higher, soften your elbows. Good, circle there, and then go on the center line. Yeah, good, soften your elbows. So like, I want you to flap your elbows more like a butterfly or a chicken, like you're doing the chicken dance. Soften your elbows, soften your forearms. 10 meter circle at X. Yeah, but when you soften, like there you're just kind of throwing them away. Keep riding, keep your elbows. You can soften for like a stride, but then you're right back in it. Flex right, get in a walk transition on the center line and then canter left. Uh-huh, hind leg, raise your hands, raise the pole. Left hand, bring the left shoulder back. Left shoulder back, left elbow soft. Tick, tick with the hind leg, activate. Yeah, so that's a ton of left bend. You need your right rein there. In order to soften the left rein, you need the right rein. Right hind leg, center line. Feel that outer rein. Bend them to the outside. Widen your inner hand, pull your left shoulder back. Good, straighten them. Yeah, twist into the left. Yeah, look at his face. Straighten them with the right rein. Yeah, and walk. Sit. Yes, walk. Pull up, hands higher. Hands are right. Inside leg, good. So keep them straighter down the outer rein in that transition. Now carry your hands up. Collect, don't let this canter get creepy crawly. Sit. Elbows in, good. Now relax your thighs and knees. Good, good. Heel down on the right side. Center line, soften your forearms. Good, flexion right. Select, 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 10 meter circle there. Turn from your outer thigh and knee. Close your fingers, even your pinky. And turn, pull your right shoulder back. Turn your upper body around the circle, good. And a walk transition. Walk. Yeah, that's why your change doesn't come through because yeah. that doesn't happen. Now flex left and canter left, pull up, pull up. Yeah, don't canter if the walk's looking like that. Yeah. Snaffle rein, raise the pole. Good, pull that left shoulder back. Pull it back, good, so that you can stay grounded in with your left hip. One, two, three, one, two, three, left hip. Good with your right rein. You fixed that, good. What's your left pinky doing? Here's your left hand. You fixed that, now what's that doing? Good, pull in each corner. Pull the inside shoulder back. Use your body to help you in the turn. Collect. collect. Yeah, the walk's not gonna happen. Collect, that collect. Quick leg, quick leg, hands up, hands up. Yeah, so you kind of went into hit, kind of reeling him back. Yeah. And then he was tipping on the forehand. So your hands need to be like three inches higher, higher. And then with your turn, bring the left shoulder back, left hand wider. Widen it, but keep your elbow in. So look at me, Tarek, like you're opening the door. The elbow has to stay at your rib cage, but your shoulder's back. Elbow at your rib cage. Good, and let's canter. I know it's crooked, Montero. Yeah, so your outer leg guards, but your inner leg is what says canter. Canter. Inside leg, don't let the pull sit down. Yeah, so your hands were pressing down. You need to carry your hands three inches canter uphill like you're climbing up a staircase. Start 10 meter circle, hands higher. So imagine that you're cantering up a spiral staircase. Hands higher, good, and a flexion left. You need a little outside leg. Bring your left shoulder back, bring your left shoulder back, good. Good, and sit, select, quicken the canter, quicken, quicken, quicken. And now walk, hands up, three inches up, 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 up. Good, 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 let him walk. Let him. Good. So 
it's all about like when you think that your chest is up and your hands are up, put them like three inches up higher. Because I think in your head, you're thinking, God, my hands are already really up. But I think you have to go there a little more of an extreme, like really yeah. up here and back. Um, no, you, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, and then, you know, then he's in that, in this posture, because if he gets a little bit on the forehand in the canner, then it's, he's like a lot on the forehand. Yeah. But that makes your turning better, because that exists right there in your half bone. You know, the bend that you insist on that 10 meter circle to the center line, you just take that on a diagonal line and that's your half pass. You just right. maintained that amount of bend and you point him at E or, you know, like that's the half pass positioning. Yeah. So then you should just do like one beautiful half pass, not seven half passes where you try to make it a little bit better. No, you know your half pass is gonna be good because you have good trueness and bend on the circle. Yeah. And that's your body. So if you're going in the half pass like this, but you're going that way, your body is saying go right. So you have to make sure your left shoulder in that turn comes back because then it's like here, you show his shoulders where to go. If your right. shoulders are going this way, the outside, you're telling his shoulders to go right, but then your right leg is kicking and saying, no, go that way. I'll try to get down yeah, to... Yeah, and if you look in like the... But I think it's all about if you can get you more of a twist in your upper body, in every corner, really exaggerate pulling your inner shoulder back. And turning so that if you had like a, a light on your sternum that was shining like straight out from you, you know, you're turning your torso to highlight so that the light shines a little bit like you change the angle like a lighthouse kind of. So even now just turn your shoulders in and just your shoulder in. Pull your left elbow back. Good. Yeah without so we're not pushing the haunches out. We really shouldn't have any like pushing left leg. So keep your outer leg guarding and the, both hands come in. We want the shoulders to come in. Like at the girth. Yeah, so 